Mic, mic, mic testing one, two. Mic check, mic check one, two. Hello? Hello, test one, two, three. People in the church many times don't understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> this is the biggest challenge for me. How I can be part of the world as a salt, what Jesus said, you have to be salt, and uh, to be close with God. This is my challenge for me and for my family. To be very close by God and to be close with the people outside. Mostly I am working with not Christian people. Pastor Jan lives in Košice, Slovakia. 
His passion is working with people who don't know about Jesus' love for them, especially the Roma community. Many people will not associate with the Roma and find ways to keep their distance. Years of cultural differences have created a barrier between the ethnic groups in the region, but Jan feels called to reach out anyway. He often organizes activities with the Pathfinder Club and outings for underprivileged children and youth. If you are working with the children, you can, you can uh, touch uh, parents' hearts. If I am uh, good for children, parents are happy as well. Pastor Jan works in the outskirts of Košice, among the Roma community. With each visit, he brings gifts. These simple presents open the doors and show them that he cares about them. The Roma have challenging lives. In this house, seven families live together. One of the mothers is a Seventh-day Adventist, and she teaches the children stories from the Bible. Pastor Jan stops here to greet his friends and bring a word of encouragement. Before leaving, the group takes a picture together to remember this special moment. <laughs> Meet Monica. From a young age, she really wanted to participate in activities with the Pathfinders. But she faced a lot of challenges with her family because they believed the Adventists would not be a good influence in her life. Pastor Jan taught Monica important truths from the Bible. He also helped her find strength to succeed despite her family's opposition and the scarce opportunities in her community. Today, Monica is an example to others in her village. She is well-educated, having graduated from university, and serves as an educational coordinator at her town's community center. Monica was a very special person. She was like a miracle, because she wanted, knew about Jesus everything. She wanted to read Bible properly, and then she started to teach another Bible I love to see the children coming with joy in their eyes. They can see that I've changed because of Jesus. I am so happy when they say they want to be closer to Jesus and have a story like mine. Monica and her husband now lead three groups of youth and children at the local Adventist church. They hope to disciple others in the community and mend broken relationships so God's church can grow. Please pray for Pastor Jan's and Monica's outreach ministries. This quarter, your 13th Sabbath offering will support this work among vulnerable children in Slovakia and the Czech Republic. It will also build a church with a children's center in Bulgaria and assist Adventist education in Spain and Germany. Thank you for your support of the 13th Sabbath offering. Good morning and happy Sabbath and welcome to our online program at the Windsor Seventh-day Adventist Church. We are very happy to have you online this morning. For those of us who are here this morning, we want to welcome you to our Sabbath school. We are very happy to know that God has granted us this privilege whereby we can come and to share his word as we continue in these last days. We have been studying the book of Daniel for this first quarter, and we are at the final leg of Daniel's uh, study, uh, the topic we will be looking at for today is from dust to stars. And what a tremendous lesson we have been enjoying since the, the, the beginning of this quarter. And we hope that as you tune in with us and you participate, you will be truly blessed. I have in studio here this morning, two of my colleagues on my right, your left is Raphael. And on my left, your right, is our youth pastor, Pastor Jephthah. Just before we go into our debate or discussion, I'm going to ask you to bow your heads where you are as we pray. Oh God, oh Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity that we can come and to share your words with your people. We welcome your Holy Spirit now to ignite our minds and help us 
as we bring forth your words, that we will be blessed, and those listening and participating will be blessed, we pray, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Good morning, guys. How are you doing this morning? Good morning. Good morning, yes. Elder Randall. Yes, very happy to be here this morning and to see you out. And we know God has been protecting us in spite of the corona uh, virus that is going on. We are alive and we are well, and we are here to help to share hope in yes. this despondent time. Uh, our lesson we have been studying throughout this quarter is really a very, very interesting lesson, a lesson to which we have come to realize uh, the time that we are living in. And it doesn't end on a sad note, which I'm happy. It ends on a note, a glorious note, to give us the hope amidst the difficulty, amidst the persecution, whatever will come our way. God is with us, and he will continue to be with us. I'm going to ask Pastor Jeff at this time to just share as we begin in our lesson. Good morning, everybody. We are glad that you have joined us this morning. Our lesson study here is um, focused on the book of Daniel, chapter 12. And uh, for the first day, which is the Sabbath afternoon, the introduction of the lesson here talks about the title, From Dust to Stars. Elder Rafat, what does that title mean to you? I mean, just before you dive into the lesson study itself, what does the title mean, From Dust to Stars? Mm -hmm. is it, it sounds like an intriguing, yes. you know, an intriguing title. What yes. does it say to you? Yes, it says actually a lot of things because... This is the final or the end of the prophecy of Daniel. Okay. And then can you imagine, uh, it is a journey, like every, every lesson of every chapter, yeah. Daniel took us in journey, sometimes from place to place and sometimes from situation to situation, bad situation to good situation. And in this uh, chapter, can you imagine you, in, from the dust to the stars, because said in the chapter that uh, the God's people on that day, they will shine like stars in the sky. And this is, of course, uh, something special, something important, give hope that after this is a resurrection and there is glory. Mm -hmm. This is what means it for me. Amen. I, too, want to share where that is concerned, um, from dust to star. When I, I look at the subtopic here, what came to my mind before even going into the lesson is that we are all came from the dust. And uh, those of us who live and die before Jesus' coming, there's a great day that is coming, a resurrected day, you know, and those of us who have died in Christ, will surely rise to see him. We will be stars, so to speak. So we are moving from one dispensation to another, from dust, and now we will be with Jesus Christ. We look forward to that great resurrected day when Jesus will come and take us from this sin cursed earth. Yes, if, uh, I would like also to say something in general about the 12 chapters uh, in Daniel. Uh, started actually, good start from learning to understanding. And this was very important because uh, before we uh, read the word or we, do, we, we learn something in the Bible, we have to study it, yeah. we have to understand it. And when we start with understanding, then we can understand what God wants from us, uh, how to live in this time of the days. And we see that a lot of journeys started uh, for example, uh, the, uh, the three friends from Daniel, uh, from the fire furnace and to the palace. Mm -hmm. But something also happened more than this, that Jesus, the Son of God, was walking with them. Yes. If they didn't go in the f furnace, they will not walk with Jesus. Mm -hmm. And actually, they went in the fire, then they get something special that Jesus came and walked with them. Then the, the, the fire 
became like paradise. Mm -hmm. And we see also with Daniel. Daniel in the, in the lion's den uh, became uh, sleeping with actually with, with angels uh, protecting him. And if he didn't went, if he didn't go to the den, he didn't see the angels mm -hmm. and so on. So, so, so in other words, what you are saying is that um, whatever situation we find ourselves, we can be assured in the, 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 the rough times that Jesus is always here with us. So we need not to worry. We will go through the fire, mm -hmm. furnace, whatever our, our experience or difficult experience, Jesus is always there. He's always there to show up, to comfort us, to give us the hope that we are not alone. And that is good. Yes, God. yes. And, and, and actually, I have to tell you uh, how many times Jesus appeared to Daniel in this book. Mm -hmm. We see here, for example, I give you examples. In chapter 2, we see Jesus Christ like as a stone or the rock. And in chapter 3, verse 25, we see as the Son of God. And then in chapter 5, we see the Holy Spirit writing on the wall of the palace yes. to give a message to the king. And in chapter 6, we see God's angel in the lion's den. And in chapter 7, the son of the man. And in the chapter 8, the prince of the princes. Mm -hmm. And in chapter uh, 9, the messiah. The yeah. Christ is the Messiah. And in chapter 10, the man dressed in linen. Also, this is Jesus Christ. And then in chapter 12, the great prince. And we wonder because in every chapter in Daniel, it started with a ruler, a king, a human king. From chapter 1 to chapter 11. We see always every, the chapter starts in the verse 1 with the name of a king. But in the chapter 12, it's special because it starts with Michael, the great prince. And this is, for me, this is a special chapter because uh, give actually conclusion for all the book of Daniel. Okay, okay. All right, we just want to welcome Sister Zena to our studio this morning. Very happy having a beautiful smile as usual. We want to thank you for joining us. We are on the topic, as you should know, that from dust till star to stars. All right, um, Pastor, could you shine some light on uh, this topic in terms of uh, the time that we are living now? How do you correlate with uh, our, our time that we are living in this lesson concerning the Daniel story? You know, I'm glad you asked uh, that question because prophecies are so many things that make us excited as a Christian denomination, which is the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And as I'm looking at this particular uh, study here, the lesson, I'm intrigued by the memory text. Maybe a viewer is watching and they didn't come across the text. So we'll just read this text to you, Daniel chapter 12, verses 3. It says, those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament. And those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Amen. I'm grateful for uh, Rafat's uh, kind of overview yes. that he has given us all the way from Daniel chapter 1 all the way to Daniel chapter 12, which is the ending chapter that we are discussing today. So basically, Daniel and his friends come into Babylon not on their own will. Yes. They have been brought into captivity, but God turns what has been planned for evil to good. Amen. And I guess that's how it ties in with the topic from dust to stars. So, Madam Zenia, you're joining us here as a rose among the thorns. Amen. Maybe you could just share with a viewer what you have been studying perhaps during the week about this uh, lesson study, lesson chapter 13 of um, our Sabbath school quarter. What has come across to you specifically on this Sabbath afternoon lesson? Because that's the introduction of the lesson. Soon we'll need to move on to Sunday. Yes. But for now, maybe we'll give you a platform, a chance to also speak to the viewers and give us an exciting discussion on what you have encountered. 
So maybe you want to switch on the mic. There is a button right there. What I've encountered is the love that God has for us yes. in the relationship that we learn about with these brothers, our brethren in Christ. Yes. We need to be more loving, more kind towards one another yes. and recognize that we are facing the end time and we need to practice what we preach. Exactly. Amen. Amen. All right, so we're going to move on to Sunday subtopic here, Michael or Prince. Uh, when we think about a prince, who do we really think of? What is the characteristic of a prince? You want to share that with us, Adaraf? Uh, yes, prince can uh, give me an idea about the crown prince. Yeah. Uh, the son of the king. Mm -hmm. But also here he is the prince of the princes who has control on the everything in the world when the day comes. Yes. Then he, uh, I, can, I cannot find words to, to describe right, yes. Jesus Christ as a prince. And when we read the scripture in the, chapter, in the verse 1 and 2 in chapter 12, we see that this prince has actually two functions, very important functions. We see him in, as a military re, uh, leader. Yes, yes. And this is very important to protect his people mm -hmm. from the devil and his uh, uh, angels. Or <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and the second one, and this is very, very important, as advocate yes. who represent also his people on the day of the judge. And let me also read uh, one verse from Romans 8, 34. Then we see this, uh, uh, how, how Jesus can represent and protect his people. Yes. Uh, Paul said in uh, Romans 8, uh, verse 34, who is he that condemns? Ask questions. Jesus Christ who died Yes, rather who was raised from the dead, who is at the right hand of God, who also make intercession for us. Yes. And in Hebrews 7.25, therefore he is also able to save to completely those who come to God through him seeing that he lives forever to make intercession for them. Amen. Isn't Amen. it great? Amen, yes. So we, we, we see that we keep, Jesus here uh, has different functions, so to speak. Uh, as you mentioned about military, he, that shows that he has authority. Mm -hmm. He can represent us. We need not to worry. You know, exactly. you know, Jesus is capable of representing us. And he is also our mediator. Yes. And that is what is very important for us as Christians. Yes. We need not to go to the Pope. We need not to go to ministers. Even my good friend here, Pastor Jeff, <laughs> we don't have to go to him yeah. when we have a sin problem. We can take it to the Lord and say, take it to the Lord in prayer. Yes, I mean, yes. All right, uh, Pastor, would you like to share something here now on, on Monday section as we are moving with time? Written in the book. Definitely. Um, the title itself, Michael, Our Prince. You agree with me that this is not just like any regular prince yes. that you might have encountered. Uh, as I was doing a little research about the mention of the word Michael in the Bible, yes. I'm actually realizing that there's 15 times that this name is referenced in the Bible. Yes. And what's more interesting in that 10 of those times that it's mentioned, they're actually found in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. And uh, we come across this very name, Michael, Daniel chapter 12, and yes. even earlier on in Daniel chapter 10, 
where we see Michael being the same powerful being, mm -hmm. the same powerful being that has the powers that helps Daniel while during the Tigris River. Yeah. I don't know if that's familiar. If you, yes. Yes. If you reverse back to yes. Daniel chapter 10, you kind of encounter the same man. But what's interesting there is that this person kind of has some supernatural powers, meaning he's not just like any other human being. Because remember, Daniel is faced with a pre predicament. Yes. Mm -hmm. And with his humanity, he's failing to overcome. But Michael comes in and steps in and makes a difference. So and even in Daniel chapter 12 here, verse 1, it says, Then Michael shall stand. Yes. Yes. Not just any Michael, but the stance that he takes there makes him different from any other prince that perhaps you and I have encountered. So it's interesting to me, the statistics, having Michael being referenced in the Bible all these other times. Who is Michael? Maybe somebody might be questioning and you might be quite inquisitive who Michael might be. Maybe we can help answer that question, who Michael the prince is in relation to Daniel's story and the prophecies that are unfolding as we see them now and some that have unfolded in the past. Yeah. Who is Michael? Maybe that's a question I can pose to the panel here. All right. Sister Zena, you want to share any light on that? Who is this Michael that we are talking about in scriptures? Michael is able. Michael is our Jesus. Amen. Who is capable and able to do all things that yes. we ourselves is unable to do. Okay, thank you. All right. We move to... Uh, yeah, you asked a question about uh, uh, those who are found written in, in the book. And I would like to say something about this. Um, the answer is God's people who delivered during the terrible time because they have been vindicated by Jesus. Yeah. This is the definition for those people. Mm -hmm. And they are written in actually two books as the scripture le learn us. The first one is the book of life. And we can see this in, in many, I, I, uh, my search, I found uh, many uh, scripture mentioned the book of life. Yes. And I chose actually uh, two from uh, Old Testament and two from mm -hmm. the New Testament. Okay. And in the Old Testament, we see this in Exodus 32, 32. Yet now, if you will forgive them their sin, and if not, please, please uh, blot, uh, also uh, as remove, uh, blot me out of, the, of your book, which you have written. Yes. Then there is a book, and God uh, writes this book. And in Psalm 69, 28, let them be blotted out of the book of life. And he talks about wicked people. <clears throat> and not be written with righteous. In Luke 10, 20, rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Yes. And Revelation 17, 8, the inhabitants of the earth whose names have not been written in the book of life from the creation of the world. Amen. Amen. And the second book, actually, this is the records of the human deeds. Yeah. And if we, we read this in Psalms 56, 8, a record of my lament, list me, my, list me and list my tears on your scroll. Are they not in, in your record? And he, this is a question. He, he, he talked here to God, so you, you write everything, then you know. Yes. And in uh, Malachi 3, 16, a book of remembrance was written in his presence for those who feared the Lord and honored his name. 
many, many others. For sure, there is two books, and the one is the Book of Life for the uh, peoples of God, yes. and also uh, God's remember everything we do in our life for His glory and for His uh, kingdom. Amen. Elder Randall, I'm itching to just share uh, some intriguing stuff. Thank you, uh, Rafat, for your point of view on, 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 on just how Michael becomes special yes. as the Prince of Del Deliverance. Uh, one of the many things that are making me itch is uh, if I, when I'm looking at how Daniel's book is written out, yeah. you agree with me that as Daniel introduces each chapter, so for each chapter that Daniel has written in his book, he actually begins by mentioning a ruler. He begins by mentioning who is the king, who is in yes. charge, mm -hmm. you know, who rules the place. But you, 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 you be uh, surprised, just like myself, the twist that happens there between mentioning just any random ruler. Mm -hmm. Because in the past chapters, Daniel is mentioning pagan. Is that how you say it? pagan rulers? Yeah. Like ungodly rulers. Yeah. You have the rulers of Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and so forth. But the twist comes now when Daniel mentions Michael, who is not just like any other ruler that he has been mentioning in the past. So which means there should be something significant about this chapter. Right. Another thing maybe that's important to note is the timing. There's a perfect timing when Michael is intervening. He's not just intervening because maybe Daniel did not sleep well and he has a stomach ache or something, but there is, it says at that time, mm -hmm. At that time, Michael shall stand. So what's this time? Maybe somebody is wondering, is it that time? Is it 11.30, divine service time, or lunch time? What's the time that Michael is standing at? And as I'm doing some, some, some review here, I'm seeing that this is a period of time that extends from the fall of the papacy. That's right. You remember the kingdom, yes. the, the, the purple kingdom, and then it says in 1798, the papacy falls where there is a wound. You go back to Revelation, it tells us about the beast that is wounded. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and at that end time then, it, it, it flows into the end time where Michael sees all of these events happening. And this is Jesus. He's saying, I can see my people are under affliction and all of these prophecies that Daniel seems not to understand what's going on. Michael seems to stand at the right time. You remember the, 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 the verse later in the New Testament that says, and in the fullness of time, Jesus will come. Will come. Yes. So a lot of people have been worried. So there's coronavirus, what do I do? There's all of this dilemma in the world. But I'm here to encourage you that Michael will stand at the fullness of time. Just Amen. when you are at the edge of falling off and you're yes. thinking, man, I'm giving up. Yes. I'm washing my hands out of this. And then the Bible says, at that time, Michael shall stand. One other thing uh, before we run into Monday. I'm just getting exci excited here. Yes. Uh, it says there are two important aspects to note about the stance that Michael takes. Because I'm always one person who is interested not maybe in the yada yada that people do. Many people say, Pastor, can I meet up? We meet. We have conversations. We have meetings, series of meetings. But you realize that People meet, but they do not act. Mm. There's a difference. You can meet and talk and say, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to be the champion. I'm going to champion this cause. Yeah. But if you don't act, yeah. then your words are just, you're blabbing. Like you're not actually saying something fruitful. But it says here, Michael stands, which is a verb. It's an action word. Yeah. And, 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 and I'm, I'm hoping these guys are not so much zoomed in to me here because I just want to make the action. Michael's sitting down and Michael says he shall stand. And when he stands, you realize with me that this is a stance, a military stance. Kings, you're from Egypt, Rafa. Kings, I'm from the southern part of Africa. I realize how the kingship thing works. Yes. You know, when, when kings are about to go to war, and maybe even here in North America, we have heard of kings and so forth. But when kings stand, there's something that needs to happen. They're not just standing for any reason. So I just want you to keep that at the back of your mind or somewhere 
close by because it's going to be useful yeah. as we go throughout the rest of the study. So let's jump on to Monday. All right, so we can move on to, to Monday, although Rafa's dealt so much in it. There's something I'd like to read at the, 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 the last paragraph here on the Monday. It says, in addition to the book of light, the scripture mentioned books containing the record of human deeds. These are the books used in the heavenly tribunal to determine every person's commitment to the Lord. These are heavenly record uh, database from upon the idea of having their names and especially their deeds written in heaven. But once we commit our lives to Christ, our names are inscribed in the book of life and our bad deeds are deleted in the judgment. This heavenly record provided judicial evidence to the entire universe that we belong to Jesus and therefore have the right to the protection or the protected during the time of trouble. And for me, this gives me hope. Because I see here that God will indeed, as it said in, in the previous um, day's lesson, that Michael will stand up. So there's coming a time when Michael will stand up for his people, as you rightfully said, Pastor. So we need not to worry, viewers online, you know, whatever our difficulties, whatever our struggles are, God will stand up for us. So, but we need to stand up for him. And if we stand up for him, he will also uh, stand up for us. All right, Sister Zena, you want to share anything on that before we move on to our next day's topic? Again, we still have to believe and know that God will come through for us. Yes. We need to have faith in the good times and the bad, bad times. times yes. In the good times and the bad times, we also need to pray. Yes. Pray if it's good and pray if it's bad, because God is still in charge. Amen. Amen. All right, Brother Raph, we, we, we're going to move a little quick as time proceeds. On Tuesday, the resurrection. Yes. Uh, you want to share some light on this part of our study? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, if we read this in, uh, in chapter 12, as we mentioned before, it gives us hope. Yes. There is a resurrection after this. And uh, the resurrection of uh, this uh, mentioned in Daniel in uh, verse 2, 3, and also 13. And in, in the this, the person sees to exist, exist and remain unconscious yeah. until the resurrection, the day of the advent when Jesus come. Uh, the death made by Adam when he fall, but Jesus when died on the cross and then he uh, raised up again, give us the life back. Then as Paul said, uh, we don't be sad like other people, you don't have hope. hope yeah. Because we have hope, there is a resurrection after this. And then there is uh, eternity life. And in chapter, Daniel, uh, chapter 12 of Daniel, explain that there are two uh, kinds of eternal life. Eternal life for God's people. Yes. And this is you will join Jesus Christ and enjoy the happy life forever, everlasting life. But there is another life of four uh, who didn't listen to the word of God, who didn't believe in Jesus, and this is a shame life. And this mentioned also in Daniel. Uh, I want to also to, to read uh, one verse from the first uh, Corinthians, chapter 15 and verse 54. But when this body, uh, when this corruptible will have put on incorruption, yes. and this mortal will have put on 
immortality, uh, then uh, what in written will happen? And what is written actually? Here. This is swollen up in victory. Amen. Amen. Then another journey. Yes. From dust, from this, to the victory. And isn't and we see here consolation for the the, the God's people. That's right. Uh, hope, consolation great consolation we don't fear from the future we don't fear from anything contagious disease or virus or war or anything because you know i, I remember now i go back to the uh, three friends of daniel who on the, the 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 king said to them if you don't uh, worship this uh, mm -hmm. statues i put you on the fire and they said to him we trust god will save us right. but if not, still not born. No problem. We That's don't fear. Right. Because we say with Paul, if we die, we die for Jesus. If we live, we live for Jesus. If we die or live, it's for Jesus. Amen. Amen. So as Christians, we should be very resolute to our belief, regardless of the crises and difficulties, we must determine that we'll stand for Jesus Christ. Yes. But there's a popular saying where um, resurrection of, um, of the dead is concerned. There are some people of this myth that in spite of dying, when you, you die, you eventually goes to heaven. And, and, and some people is preaching that, you know, you die. As a matter of fact, even at funeral service, back home I used to hear a popular song there is somewhere around the throne, you know, as if when you died, you go straight to heaven. But Sister Zena, what, how, how do you look at this? Is this really true? Because we, we, we look at um, First Thessalonians chapter 4, mm -hmm. 13 onwards, it gives us something to, to tell us um, if this is really a fact. But how do you look at this? Is it true that when you die, you straight translated to heaven, you're around the throne of God? Um, no. My Bible tells me that when a man is dead, he yes. is resting. That's right. He will be there resting in his grave until the day that God's come, that God comes, and he'll be risen again mm -hmm. to face whether it's eternity or whether it's hell. Okay. And you're talking about the second coming of Jesus Christ. Yes, the second coming of Jesus. Okay, so there it will be a resurrection yes. for sure. All right, Pastor. Just two things here. As I am following with uh, the conversation, we are also in quest to interact with those who are at home. Yeah. So there's a viewer here who has a comment and rather a question. Uh, they are asking here, what is indicated by the ceiling of the book? what is indicated by the ceiling of the book. And I quickly went through Daniel chapter 12 here, and I think they are asking their question based on verse 4, yes. which says, but you, Daniel, shut up the words mm -hmm. and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. So this viewer is curious. What is indicated by the ceiling of the book? Could we shed some light maybe in just one minute or two, and we'll move on with the discussion about resurrection. That's paramount, that's important. But maybe just to answer the viewer, what would you say? All right, um, in terms of that, we, we noticed that in Daniel there, when it's mentioned about sealing and, and seal up the book, there are people who believe that the book of Daniel and the book of Revelation are a book that is closed. And there are many other denominations, uh, there are other Christian bodies who believe that these books, because they are closed, many people don't even read these books. But as, you are, uh, as they are seeking this answer now, we want to know if indeed these, the, uh, the book has been sealed. So, Brother Ralph, do you want to share any light on this at this moment? Um, when I, I read this um, in Arabic uh, translation of the Bible, yes. then they mention the word that is closed for now. Yeah. 
and for me um, this is not the, the 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 right time to open it mm -hmm. here is an order for daniel seal it close it for now but because one day it will be open so it was closed it was sealed and closed for a, a, a time yes a time of second advent yes and uh, uh, some people, they try to, to find out uh, uh, and they, they said, okay, we have this time of a uh, uh, number of years and after this, Jesus will come. But, but the, Jesus uh, said, you, you cannot know this. Don't worry, don't uh, make your, your, your brain working and get tired and exhausted to find the things. Because mm -hmm. if we, we read in Matthew 24, 36, Yes. No one knows about that day yes. or hour. Not even the angels in heaven, nor the son, but only the father. Father, that's right. Okay. It, okay, the order came to Daniel, seal it for now. And this means this is not the time to, to do this. Mm -hmm. God, the Holy Father, will know when. Okay. So I just realized here that uh, this question comes and brings us ahead of ourselves because Wednesday actually talks about the sealing of the book. Yes. Uh, but maybe just to um, make some remarks on, 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 on Tuesday's uh, topic, the resurrection. For there to be a resurrection, there needs to be a death. And I'm, I'm, I'm skimming through Daniel chapter 12. I'm not finding the word death. But instead, I'm finding the word sleep. sleep. Yes. So maybe somebody also is inquisitive what sleep would mean. Because we all go to bed. Hopefully, you went to bed last night and you woke up. But this is a different type of sleep. Mm -hmm. Because these people who sleep need resurrection. Yes. So how does that all tie in maybe so that we wrap up the topic on resurrection and move on to the ceiling so that we might unpack mm -hmm. the ceiling? Yeah. What does the sleep mean in contrast to the resurrection? People sleep and then the next thing, some are resurrected, some continue sleeping and when Jesus comes, they see this man and they're judged and they go into internal damnation. But what does sleep mean? Maybe you could help define sleep in this context. All right, we know that um, sleep is an unconscious state that one will find his or her self in. Uh, but for the Christian, the death of the Christian is, is known as a sleep because it's like a moment that when Jesus comes, you will be awakened from that sleep. For the non-Christian, it is dead itself because you look now uh, for that person, when Jesus comes, you will be going through the same process again, the second death. So in other words, the Christian experience will be a far different experience from the man outside of, uh, of Christ. That's why the, the, the scripture said, we don't mourn like those having no hope. So when a Christian dies, so to speak, we believe that that person is just sleeping. It's just a moment, like going to your bed, as it were, and tomorrow morning waking up, when the Spirit of God wakes you from your slumber. So just to, to affirm my elder here, Randall, you might have been um, beating yourself. Man, if I sleep, am I going to wake up? Mm -hmm. Maybe you have a relative, or you are just distressed because you're seeing so much on the news the death tolls are going up for this virus. Yes. But I'm here to encourage you and let you know that you just sleep, but for a moment. If it's your relative that has slept, they are going to be sleeping. If they slept in Jesus, you shall see them again soon, sooner than you think. And that's the encouragement as we move on from Tuesday to Wednesday, as we are going to be talking about the sealing of the book. Please be encouraged and find hope and motivation to leave knowing that you only sleep, but you do not sleep forever. That's because right. Jesus says, when the trumpet shall, shall sound, when, when, when the archangel shall blow the trumpet, the yes. dead in Christ shall rise first. And they shall meet him 
together with us who are alive in the air. So let that be your hope. The ceiling of the book, Wednesday, the ceiling of the book, I've already read the passage, Daniel chapter 12, verse 4. What does that mean to us? Maybe we can elaborate more on what Daniel is talking about when he says some of these things have been sealed. What does that mean? Rough. You, I think I answered, I answered yeah, you this. Said you already kind of answered it. Yeah. Um, are there other thoughts that are coming, other perspectives from maybe Madam Zina, Elder Randall? Well, I, I conclude, as Brother Ruff rightfully said, you know, what he had said before. I agree with all that he said. And um, God's people will be sealed in the last days, so to speak. And at that moment, we will be, uh, as it were, be secured in Christ. You know, we cannot sin anymore. Mm -hmm. We have made up our mind. We are fully persuaded, you know, to the God that we serve. And we can rest assured that all will be taken care of, all be well with us in that moment. Yes. Also, the uh, prophecies we have to look for things is uh, in advantage of us now. Yeah. For I give example, we have advantage because we look now back in the history. And then we know that the word of God became true. The promises also of God yes. became true. And we have to learn from Daniel. Daniel also studied the, uh, the scripture from the other prophets. And then he knew that a lot of things will happen. And the covenant of God is there, promises of God is there, and everything it will be true. And then he didn't fear. Mm -hmm. And we have to do the same. We have the Bible, when we read, we see how many uh, kingdoms came and mentioned, and what uh, the prophecies said has happened. Then this gave us, okay, we don't fear, we have hope, we have a mighty God, and uh, waiting for the second coming, coming. of Jesus. Amen. Amen. There's a comment here that um, is passed on from the great controversy page 356, where it kind of talks about these prophecies that have been sealed prior to us now discovering them mm -hmm. as in the unsealing of the prophecies. One might be the 1,260-day prophecy, one also being the prophecy of uh, the 2,300 days. Yes, yes. But Ellen White says, since 1798, the book of Daniel has been unsealed. Knowledge of these prophecies has increased since then. Yes. And you agree with me that uh, if you go back into history, there is so much of people that are so much interested in the book of Daniel and Revelation mm -hmm. after 1798. And we have other people who have so much exposition of these different books. Perhaps you have heard of uh, a man from England, Joseph Wolf. Um, there was also Joseph Hoff in the Middle East, sorry, Joseph Hoff from the Middle East. There was also Manuel Lacunza in South America and William Miller, mm -hmm. who also kind of helps with our movement as the Adventist church because William Miller comes in and he sees some light. Yes. And he shares this light with the different believers. And that to me opens up the whole unsealing process. Mm -hmm because the book is sealed. But after 1798, the whole wound that is given to the beast, a lot of people are wondering why has the Pope and, this, and, 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 and the whole governance been shuttered down? So they're wondering such a powerful organization, a powerful movement, a powerful church, what has happened to it? So a lot of people start to ask questions. And as they ask questions, the unsealing of the book happens because they go into the Bible to find answers. Yes, yes. So are we also finding answers today? Are we also part of that unsealing? Because for us to really understand what the book of Daniel means, it will require us to, just like you do on Christmas Day, 
their presents and mm. gifts that are sealed. You have to open. And you have the little kids who are very excited. They, mommy, daddy, can I open up this package? So that's the same thing that should be prompting us each and every day to say, with the help of the Holy Spirit, can we listen to God's voice on what these prophecies mean? Not to make any conclusions. Mm -hmm. Yes. Not to make any conclusions, but to say, God, we are in 2020. What does the book of Daniel mean to us? Yes, we have seen Ellen White and we have read and we believe what she strongly has been given as light from God to write down as pen of inspiration to say, God's people, fear not. God is still in charge and he will help you unseal the book that he has given to Daniel because these prophecies are from God. So it's just a wonderful and amazing thing how God works this thing in his time. We just have to trust him all the way. Yes. Amen. You know, it, it's very important as believers and as viewers online that we continue to read the, the, the scriptures. You know, we find life, you know, and we, we get, we get our, our supply, our physical and our spiritual needs mm -hmm. as we read the book each day. And, and, and Jesus unfold to us his will as we seek to, to, to study his word. And we thank God for the Holy Spirit. Yes. It is he who has uh, led us you know, to, to, to read and to understand his will and so that we can live um, victorious lives. All right, we're moving on to, to Thursday. We are almost at the, the final leg of our, our study this morning. And we hope and trust that you are enjoying the, the, the study thus far. The waiting period. We are now at the waiting period. Is it that we have come to a time in history in this world as we see what is going on? Because many people out there are very confused at this time. What is happening, especially every station you turn on, Facebook, uh, Twitter, uh, wherever you go, all you're hearing about is the, the corona um, virus. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I wonder, because I said we should be more talking about Jesus more than anything, but the focus is, is on the, the, the corona and what will happen and how we... But as Christians, how do we, how do we relate to it? in this time of waiting? How, we, how, how, how do we, we see the waiting here, the contrast between what is happening in, in, around us today? You want to share something there, the rough concerning the uh, Thursday section, the waiting period? Yeah, as mentioned before, waiting period, we don't know. Yeah. Only God knows this. But we know that will happen. That is the most important. Mm -hmm. Then how long? If something really will happen, that's what we believe as Christians. And if I know this for sure, I don't care when. Mm -hmm. Just to be live in peace, live in trust, live in faith, love each other. And you know that God it changed everything in the favor of his people. And always I, I hear all of the word when I read the Bible, in any part in the Bible, that the God always said, you are my people. Mm -hmm. I am your God. Is this is not enough mm -hmm. for us to be sure, to be trusted, guaranteed? We have everything. Yes. Then we don't worry when, when this happened. I, I wanted to, to share something interesting when I read the, uh, the, the, the river where Daniel saw this vision. It is Tigris River. And Tigris River run in Syria and Iraq, the north. But in Hebrews, in the, uh, in the uh, language, uh, they mentioned a special word mm -hmm is only for the river in Egypt, the Nile. And this is strange, mm -hmm. because he stand on the Tigris, but he talk out and spoke, speak out the name of Nile. You know, in, in, as an Egyptian, I know, we, we never say the river. Yeah. We say the Nile. The 
And then other, nine, other rivers, we say, okay, this is a river. Then it has a special name. And Daniel used this name, and he wants maybe to say to us, or to say to his people at that time, remember what happened in Egypt. Your God liberate you mm -hmm. and give you freedom from Egypt and to the wonderful land. I think this is the message the, 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 the Daniel wanted to, to say it, uh, to remember how, how, how many blessings God gave it to you. And then I, I, I come back to the, your question, and I think the answer, you mentioned the uh, uh, second Thessalonians uh, verse 2 and 3. Mm -hmm. This is will answer about this, uh, your question. Let no one deceive you in any way, yes. for it will not be unless the departure comes first and the man of sin is revealed, mm -hmm. the son of destruction, who opposes and exalts himself against all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple, in the temple of God, yes. setting himself up as God. Yeah. And well, after this, then we can look and wait for the second advent. Amen. Amen. All right, sister, <coughs> sorry, Sister Zena, you want to share anything <coughs> on this aspect? In waiting, as we wait, what do you think we should be doing? Should we just sit down, you know, rocking back like we are seated right here on the chair, just sitting and waiting and say, Jesus is coming, so I'd let me just sit down and wait. Is there any, anything that we should be doing during this period of, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> of waiting? Yes, we should be watching unto prayer as we are encouraged in the word of God. Yes. We need to get into our Bibles and we need to see what the word of God is saying to us. Mm -hmm. uh, during this time period, I have noticed that a lot of family have no choice but to spend time together. Mm -hmm. The children are not used to having the parents around as much as they do now. So we are seeing a time where Parents and children are spending more time together, and this is the time also for us to teach these little ones that God is coming, yes. and we need to be closer to our Bibles, and we need to watch unto prayer. Amen. Amen. Pastor. You know, as we finish up here with just uh, 10 minutes left of our Sabbath school study, there is something about the waiting period, whether you're waiting in line at Walmart, or whether you're waiting at the doctor's office. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not the best thing for me because I don't like waiting. I just like to get on with it and yeah. see what's happening when I'm in the moment. But sometimes there's a blessing in waiting yeah. because the saying goes, patience is virtue. a virtue. Yeah. And as we are waiting, uh, one thing that I can affirm with what uh, Madam Zenia has said there is Luke chapter 19, Luke chapter 19, there's a parable there of the minus or the parable of money, mm -hmm. whatever you want to uh, define it as, but it's a parable, and Jesus is sharing this parable, and he says the parable of heaven is like. Verse 13 in particular sticks out to me because when Jesus gives these servants that are waiting, and they are wondering what they should be doing in the time being, he says, occupy till I come. And that is something that I've held dear to my heart in ministry, in conversations with people who are asking, why are you Seventh-day Adventists? Why didn't just Jesus come and pick you up and take you home? But there is a point in waiting. Jesus says, yes, I'm preparing a place for you, John chapter 14, mm -hmm. so that where I can be, you may also be. But in the meantime, but in the meantime, mm -hmm. wait. But don't just wait idle, because remember the saying also says, an idle mind mm -hmm. is the devil's workshop. So Jesus says to fill your space 
make sure you're proactive, not just to fill up time, but you're proactive to be productive. Oh, Lord. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm spitting some, <laughs> some gems here. Be proactive to be pro and be productive. And, and, and another version there says, do business till I come. come yes. mm -hmm. What does business mean? It means be about your father's business. Remember Jesus, 12 years old, he's going with his parents, and suddenly they're in Jerusalem. They see him, he's nowhere to be found, they go home. Mm -hmm. Then Joseph says, hey, honey, where is our son? Mary says, no, I, th I thought we came with him. They go back to Jesus, they find him, they say, young man, what are you doing? He says, I am about my father's, father's business. Yeah. So I'm liking this translation that says, do business till I come. Not your own business, Elder Randall. Mm -hmm. Not your own business where you're going around here selling this and that. Yes, it's all right. Be about your father's. father's business. So that's the takeaway home message that I can give to somebody on this waiting time. As you are waiting, make sure you're occupying with your father's business. And that's God's business. Yeah. Yeah. Also, uh, Sister Zinia reminded me when she mentioned the word watch. Remind me is Matthew 25, 13. Mm. When he said, therefore, keep watch. Because you don't know the day or the, the hour. Or the hour. Mm -hmm. And in Arabic the tra translation, they used don't sleep. Mm. Watch, it means became, stay, stay awake. And this is what the message we, we say it now. We have to keep watch. We have to stay awake, uh, teaching and learning and uh, Sending the message of Jesus Christ in the whole world. Mm, yes. And this is the waiting time. While yes. waiting, we have to do this at least. All right. I want to thank the panelists for you know, sharing the views this morning. And those online, we thank you for tuning in. We hope and trust that we have uh, answered your question and that you are satisfied with what has been said. And we want to just leave you with the closing aspect, as we have said, in, in, in waiting, while we are waiting, let us endeavor to do the will of God. Soon and very soon, the scripture said, he that will come, will come and will not tarry. So we have a, a work to be done. All of us have a work to be done. And let us use this opportune time to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ so that he can come and take us from the sin coast world and we can live with him through the ceaseless ages of eternity. So again, my panelists, we want to thank you for being with us this morning. And we hope and trust that we will continue to be faithful until Jesus comes. We come to the end of Sabbath school at this time. And we're going to make our transition to the divine service. And we ask you that you continue to tune in as we proceed throughout the day. We're going to ask Pastor to close with prayer for us. Bow your heads, close your eyes as we pray. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling. As you wait for his appearance, may he keep you from falling as well as you go about your day-to-day -day endeavors and particularly today, today. Yes. As you worship with believers online, maybe you're with your family, may God protect you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you until the very day when he shall come. May that be your hope. May that be your encouragement. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Amen.